Staying with football of uh, rather more weighty matters now, here's Natalie. Yes, absolutely. Big news, of course. Nottingham Forest are under new ownership tonight. The club has been bought by one of the most wealthy families in Q8. The Al Hazawis have purchased the former two times European champions from the estate of the late Nigel Doughty. Today we've been learning more details about the new owners and the takeover. Photos of the Al Hazawi family celebrating the Nottingham Forest takeover posted on Twitter last night after Fawaz Al Hazawi broke the news. He and his brother Abdul Aziz and cousin Omar are now the club's new owners. I'm delighted. I just, I just love this club and I just want it to go forward. Absolutely blinding. Can't wait for this new season now. This is a new chapter now. Hopefully we can get back to where we belong. The Al Hazawis have purchased the club from the estate of the late Nigel Doughty. He died in February after a 12-year ownership at the city ground. Today, his son Michael has said the club is now in safe hands. I'm very excited about the, the kind of new investment that the new owners bring, the new enthusiasm. But I think, uh, obviously, due to the circumstances of the recent recent passing of my father, I think that's. That's obviously uh, kind of a, a tad bittersweet. The Al Hazawis are wealthy Kuwaiti businessmen. They've made their money in refrigeration and air conditioning. They are uh, one of the richest family, uh, families in Gulf. Their father, uh, Mr. Mubarak al Hazawi, was a, a big man here in Kuwait. One of his famous companies is Veep, which owned by his son. And I think he will be the president of Nottingham Forest. In a statement last night, they talked about the challenging times ahead and bringing the glory days back to the city ground. They also said it has always been our intention to seek the opinion and loyal counsel of the fans. So it seems the supporters will be at the heart of the future of the club. They'll get the chance to meet the Al Hazawi family at a press conference here on Saturday. There have been reports of a change of manager, but one former player thinks current boss Steve Cotterell is the right man. Everyone knows that new owners bring their, their own manager in at times, but uh, you know, for one, I'd, I'd like to see him given a chance and um, you know, that's down to the manager then to, to prove his worth. So Nottingham Forest of the Championship are the latest club in English football to have new foreign owners. Well, their first job will be assembling a new squad. Defender Joel Lynch has completed his move to Huddersfield today. He wanted to stay. He was optimistic about, uh, about what the Al Hasawi family can do with their resources to take Nottingham Forest forward and, and get them back close to the Premier League. But clearly that meeting yesterday uh, meant that the, the two parties have gone their separate ways and now Nottingham Forest are looking for a new manager. Incidentally, the Al Hasawi family are supposed to be holding a press conference on Saturday at the city ground. It'll be the first time we get to meet Nottingham Forest new owners. They've got a lot of questions to answer, haven't they? Not only about their decision to relieve Steve Cottrell of his job at this short notice, but also where they plan to take the club forward from here. We're going to work hard to reach the Premier. We did a plan for that. The plan will take, might be take three to five years, but doesn't mean that we're going to leave it for next season. We're going to push hard. Their business plan includes a possible new stadium, new players, three internationals from Kuwait are already coming for trial, but the first priority, a new manager. I spoke to Mick McCarthy and I spoke to four others. Everybody's under assessment. We're going to be meeting them one at a time. And then after that, a decision will be made. We have a three to a five year business plan that has been carefully put in. So within a period of time, hopefully will make everyone happy. I want to see them always happy. I don't want to see them sad. And I wish that I want to make them happy for the future. The three tycoons now make up the board. Abdul Aziz is head of the family and the front man. Brother Farwaz has a football background after running Kuwaiti club Kadzia. And cousin Omar will run the business side. To choose Nottingham Forest, absolutely fantastic, and I think it's a day that will long, live long in the memory of all Forest supporters. Fans friendly, brilliant two words to use. They tell us what they want and what they're going to do and the plans, and they seem very positive, so I'm very positive too. It's refreshing. 
The Forest team listened intently in Saturday's press conference. Then the owners met each player one to one. We had a meeting yesterday. It all seemed to seem to be pretty positive and um, seemed nice people. So let them get about the job now and appoint a manager. The backbone of this whole operation really is is really the dressing room. You know, the players, the manager, bringing in you know morale, bringing in spirit, becoming victorious. This is what we're achieving. They have a short list of four for a new manager and their credibility rests on his appointment. Everybody's under assessment. We're going to be meeting them one at a time. Then after that, a decision will be made. We still know very little about the few AT owners, the Al Hasari family. How much do you know about them? How much do you know about how much they want to put into this club, how long term their plans are? Was that an important part of the discussions you had? Well, I think it's 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 a crucial part of the, of the discussion for any football club. I think you, you you need to know where you stand and what the parameters of, of what you're working with. So um, they've been they've been as, as honest and as upfront as they can be. Talk as well about Forrest appointing an, an iconic manager. Did that make the phone call to you even more of a surprise when it came to the, the kind of big names, if you like, big personalities that were linked to the job? Well, I was, I, to be fair, I was surprised when, when Steve left, so, um, and I didn't really, I wasn't really, you know, I don't, I'm not one for the media and one for the papers, so I didn't actually know that they were looking for an iconic name, so I got told that afterwards <laughs> so uh, and then I thought to myself well all the iconic people I know are dead <laughs> so I'm thinking well, that would be a coup wouldn't it Nottingham Forest appoint a dead manager <laughs> so no it doesn't worry me I, I can't do anything about it so you know it's, uh, it's just something that doesn't, doesn't really concern me if I'm honest in terms of where you go from here the one thing that Forest fans would like to see I think is stability um, it's been a very difficult time for them. Can you and the Al Hazari family between you offer that, do you think? Is something for the long term? <laughs> well, well, I think, well the, the, the average tenure of a championship manager is probably 12 months, so probably you're saying no. Stability doesn't. Stability in football clubs is a, is a dream rather than a reality. Work is going on behind me on the permanent installation of two giant replay screens at a cost of more than a million pounds. The Alasawi family says this shows their long-term intentions. In his six months as chairman, Omar brought in 16 players. We understand he's stepping aside as chairman to concentrate on other business commitments, whilst cousin Fawaz takes up the post to be more hands-on. Nottingham Forest are once again on the lookout for a new manager. Five months in and Sean O'Driscoll's been sacked. It came just hours after the Reds' 4-2 home win against Leeds. Lee Conley reports. Brought in with a chat in the bar with the press in July. Just five months later and O'Driscoll is out of the job. And that manager role has been a troubled one. Including caretakers, they've seen seven take the role over the last five years. Not proving to be the most stable of career moves. The news has come as even more of a surprise because of Forrest's performance yesterday against Leeds. Shock news hours later as the club loses its manager and that surprised fans. Obviously a bit disappointed to see the back of Sean O'Driscoll. I thought he did a reasonably good job. Um, but obviously the owners have got bigger ambitions, I guess. I thought he should have stayed a bit longer, to be honest with you. Doing a good job, need a bit more time. Whole new team together, something like 16 players. It's not enough really. Uh, awful decision, to be honest with you. It didn't give him time. He should have given him at least like a couple more matches, didn't he? Had, he had to gel like a whole different team together. The super rich owners, the Halasawi family, said they were after an iconic name when they brought O'Driscoll in. The timing of yesterday's announcement suggests it was all planned, coming off the back of a home win. But where will these plans take them next? In a statement, they've said, we've developed a really strong squad of players, but are still searching for consistency in terms of team performance. We are looking to bring an ambitious manager with Premier League experience.
And while fans might have a wish list of who they'd like in that spot, tempting someone over to take that chair is where the Halasawi family's big bank balance might come in handy. It was back to training today for the Nottingham Forest players, but their manager Sean O'Driscoll was only there briefly to say his goodbyes, whilst the owners were preparing for talks with a potential replacement. It's my understanding that Sean O'Driscoll was taken by surprise at the timing of last night's announcement. He was at home reviewing yesterday's game when he was contacted by the club to let him know that his contract had been terminated. Last night's news came as a shock to the players. After yesterday's result, uh, we did well, we played really well, especially second half. Um, you know, it's up to the owners, you know, they've got their, their way of doing things and um, if that's what they feel is best for the club, then that's up to them. To find ourselves a point outside the playoffs and, um, and you know, to, to so I've heard the news last night, half six, seven o'clock, that the, the gaff has gone. Um, it was obviously a surprise and a, and a bit shocked and disappointed at the same time. It seems Forest owners are desperate for promotion to the Premier League by the end of this season. To do that, they're looking for a manager with Premier League experience and they're ready to back him with money in the January transfer window. Today, Alex McLeish, the former Villa Birmingham Scotland and Rangers manager, has been installed as the bookies' favourite. Tonight, Alex McLeish is relaunching his management career with Nottingham Forest. Sacked by Aston Villa seven months ago in one of his first in-depth interviews, he says he has a point to prove. That's very much in my mind that if I come back and do a pretty good job at Forest, then you know that would be utopia for me to come to a club such as this and and uh, do well do well at the club. And by doing well, that means getting to the Premier League. McLeish replaces Sean O'Driscoll, who was dismissed 48 hours ago. It was the biggest surprise in football over Christmas because Forrest are just one point off the playoffs in the Championship. I can't see the point in sacking one manager for someone who's not as good as the one they've just sacked. It, it does worry me because I can see a revolving door here at Forrest. Massive disappointment and alarm and trepidation. Time will tell. I don't know. Give them a chance. Alex McLeish may have to wait for his first game in charge here at the City Ground. They're due to play Crystal Palace tomorrow, but the turf is sodden and there'll be a pitch inspection at 9.30 tomorrow morning. His association with the Reds is lifelong, but today, by post, Frank Clark was sacked by the club, along with head of recruitment Keith Burt. A surprise for the two men concerned, and it seems the manager, Alex McLeish, too. I don't know anything about it, to be honest. Keith Burt's departure leaves McLeish with no head of recruitment midway through what he admits is a crucial transfer window. I don't believe that we are, we're equipped to you know, go up to the Premier League the top two or in terms of the playoffs, yeah, we, we, could, we could get into the playoffs. But I think we'll have a better chance if we add some new faces to the squad. McLeish said last week they were looking for an experienced goalkeeper. Not anymore. Carl Darlow will keep his spot. Competition will come from Kuwaiti Khalid al-Rashidi, who was granted a work permit yesterday. Is it difficult when a player is presented that the previous regime, or perhaps the owners are keen to fetch him, that, that you, you can present him with him as a goalkeeper? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and there's got to be a credibility factor as well, you know, because obviously because he's from Kuwait, people will think, well, you know, it's a gimmick. But... This kid has, has got tremendous talent and uh, we, he, when he comes and acclimatises here he will be fighting all the way with Darlow for the first team spot. The new owners have made their ambitions clear they want promotion. Today's departure's proof they feel changes are needed if Forrest are going to get there. Chief Executive Mark Arthur has left the club as well today. It's like any other company, isn't it? Somebody comes in to buy the company things are going to change. So I can follow too, too quickly. OK, it's what, always what the majority of fans want, but it's not necessarily what's best for the club, is it? They pump this much money into a club, they, they're going to want their own staff in there. Well, today, still no word from the top of Nottingham Forest about the thinking behind those high-profile departures. But as several fans pointed out to me, if the team get the result on the pitch tomorrow, no one is really going to care. Denials from the owners tonight in the last hour of any rift with the manager. Amidst rumours, he was ready to walk out. The club, of course, branded a disgrace over their dealings in the transfer market and there was frustration over last-minute deals that were never done.
the morning after the night before here at Nottingham Forest, despite failing to land a single player on transfer deadline day. Amidst rumours that the manager had gone, Alex McLeish is here preparing his team for tomorrow's game against Birmingham. Rumours suggested he was ready to resign after the deal to sign Peterborough striker George Boyd was called off at the 11th hour, apparently due to a failed eye test. That decision infuriated Peterborough's owners, who branded the Reds a disgrace for the way the deal had been handled. Fans weren't impressed either. It's a bit disappointing we haven't signed any players. Uh, we're going around, we haven't really got any money. We've just gone back to where we were again. We're not buying, we're not getting anybody in, we're not keeping hold of the loanies. If you bring a new manager in, then people are expecting better things. There have been five new additions to the squad earlier in the transfer window, but the fans and clearly the manager expected more. We've no divine right to, to get in the playoffs or, or get to the, the top six unless we, we show that we've got the quality to do it. Fawaz has got to say no to me at times when I ask for something and, and uh, maybe sometimes when, when some players are presented to me, I have to say no. We're, we're adults, we are two um, very ambitious men. Today, the two men met for an hour at the training ground and in a statement, Fawaz Al-Hazawi said, all I want to see is Nottingham Forest back in the Premier League and if that means I have to sign another 18 players that Alex wants, then I will do it. Whatever players he asks for, I will try my hardest to bring to Forest. That enough to appease McLeish, who said little himself about the situation. You know, just how disappointed were you with what happened yesterday, oh, Alex? Listen, I'm concentrating on a Blues game tomorrow, game against the Blues. Thanks very much. So, no new signings right. yesterday, but the owners clear to stress. No rift with the manager, and money is there to spend. B O Y D? With his contract set to expire in the summer, George Boyd's half million pound move to the city ground was considered a formality until Forrest's owners decided an eye condition that had had no previous impact on his career was reason enough to pull the plug. I bet he didn't see that coming. We were told that the deal was called off by the owner. Um, we then asked why, we asked for the evidence of it only because of what they told us about the boy having the problem with his eyes. And we said, well, is that conclusive? No. So why is the deal off then? He has to go down as one of the best players the club's had. There's no question about that. And he's a great lad, but it won't affect him. It won't. He's, a, he's a strong boy and he'll just go up with it. And he comes in and straight away there's pictures all over the dressing room of him. Best thing for him to come in and get on with it, and the lads take the Mickey, and so I, it was a good bit of banter, I have to say. Are you considering your future? Uh, no, I'm just I'm business as usual. His denial less than convincing. Chairman Farwaz Al Hazawi was unavailable for comment today, but on Friday, in a statement, he dismissed suggestions of a bust up, a rift over so called shambolic dealings in the January transfer window. On Saturday, after a 2-1 defeat at Birmingham, rather than committing his future to the club, McLeish left things up in the air. I'm not going to make any comment on, on that. I think I've got to talk about the team and the game today. With respect, that's not a ringing endorsement to say I'm happy and I'm going to carry on. Well, with respect, I'm not making any comment on that. So while speculation refuses to go away as to whether he will resign or not, McLeish prepares the team for a game with Bristol City this weekend. Ironically, they're managed now by Sean O'Driscoll. Nottingham Forest trained without a manager this morning as Alex McLeish left the club by mutual consent after just 40 days in charge. In a statement from the League Managers Association, he said... I'm extremely saddened to be leaving after such a short period. There was a difference in the understanding of the development strategy of the football club and it was felt by both parties that we should part company. His departure comes as no surprise to journalists and fans. Last week he was clearly frustrated with the lack of activity in the January transfer window. It's a bit of a shock that's two managers gone within a few months. What do you think of what's happened in the last few weeks? Fast. Saturday, he, he wouldn't make a comment, would he, whether he was staying or going, so 
Yeah. Well, more or less, no. I went to Birmingham Saturday. Uh, obviously, come out. He didn't get any backing from the uh, man from the owners. I don't know. I don't really know what to think. The Al Hazawi family sacked McLeish's predecessor Sean O'Driscoll five weeks ago when Forest were one point off the playoffs. They're now looking for their fourth manager since they took over last July. They say they were concerned about results after McLeish had won in seven. Who would you like to be the next manager? We want Billy back. Billy. Billy Davis. I would say Nigel Adkins. Well, I think we'd all like to see Billy Davis come back, but I don't think that's going to happen, is it? Yeah. We never know. We always live in hope. Yeah. <laughs> Colin, they've said the challenge was bigger than they envisaged when they took over. It's been a difficult six months, but they are 100% committed to the club. We did ask them to come into the studio tonight, but they said they're sorting a new manager. Absolutely brilliant news. I think it's best appointment we've made for a while, really. I'm very pleased about it, yeah. Can't wait to see him back because we did great under him when he was here a couple of seasons ago. I think it's a bit of a quick appointment that they've made. I think they might have thought about it a bit more, but no, I think the fans will be happy. I think we'll get the players playing instantly. It's the best news what could possibly happen. And he's the man for the job and he's going to take us in the right direction now, hopefully, and uh, the rest of the fans are behind me in, in that. Well, tonight I'm at the home of Nottingham Forest chairman Farwaz Al Hazawi here in Mayfair in London. And it's here that over the past week, he and former manager Billy Davis have been planning his shock return to the city ground. Here we are. <laughs> We had lunch and within minutes of officially announcing that Billy Davis had been reappointed as boss, he and the chairman gave us their first interviews. I'm absolutely delighted to be back. I'm delighted to be working with new, the new owners and I'm very, very much looking forward to trying our very best to achieve what we never done on my last uh, time here. So does Billy have to get promotion this season? Well, we hope so, that uh, it will happen because... It's not far. We have only maybe 16 games to go, and I think we are only maybe seven point or six point. And I think if we continue winning, it will happen. You know, when I found out about this one, then my decision was very easy, I can tell you. The 48-year-old Scotsman was harshly sacked 20 months ago by the previous owners, despite leading the club to successive playoff semi-finals. So, why go back? In my meeting with the chairman, uh, I can see clearly he's a winner. In the chairman's meeting with myself, I'm sure that he would agree that I'm also a winner. And together, we want to win. It's as simple as that. The Kuwaiti Al Hazawi family have sacked three managers since they took over at Nottingham Forest six months ago. But Farwaz Al Hazawi says Billy Davis's return heralds a fresh start. Maybe some of the fans think that Fawaz al Hasawi is interfering with the managers, and this is wrong totally. If I interfere, I will not pick Billy Davis because I know Billy Davis is a strong manager and he don't like anybody to interfere. There's this reputation that you're the kind of guy that can have an argument in a phone box. You've heard that phrase before. Can you definitely both get on? I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. That tells you everything. And Farwaz Al Hazawi says he'll be there at Billy Davis's first game back against Bolton a week on Saturday. In the meantime, Billy will meet the media as the new Nottingham Forest manager officially on Monday. Oh, unfortunately, rather more unpleasant stuff in the in the post because I'm afraid uh, Nottingham Forest have sacked more staff today. It's understood the academy and finance director as well as two or three others in the back room have lost their jobs at least 58 of years of forest experience in all it comes ahead of returning manager billy davis's first game on saturday does it concern you though you're the fourth manager here in just over seven months is that a worry well i don't know which took place rob it's very difficult for me to to make comment i don't know the reasons why i don't know what took place you know what's happened in the past as far as i'm concerned remains in the past. I'm looking forward very much to working with Fawaz and the board and everybody here at the club. And as, as I said before, I'm here quite simply because I genuinely believe we have unfinished business. And we can be clear that if new players come into Nottingham Forest or the team that you put out on a Saturday or a Tuesday, that's Billy Davis's team. There won't have been any other influence in your decision bringing players in or, or with the team. <laughs> Do you think I would be here, Rob? You know, it's, it's, it's simple. Uh, the chairman 
uh, has got great respect for what he's trying to do. He's, he's, get, he's got great understanding of the structure of the football club and what the situation is. I've got great respect for him and the financial situation at the club. And I know that together, if it's possible, we will bring in the right type and do the right thing to move this club forward. And six points off the playoffs, Billy. 13th in the table, 15 games to go. Is that doable? Can you make the playoffs? I wouldn't be here, Rob, if I didn't think it was doable. I definitely do think that uh, anything's possible. Listen, we all know the championship. The championship from top to bottom is a very difficult league. And everybody, as we all say, can beat everybody. But I've worked with the players this morning. We have an underachieving squad. There's an abundance of talent. And I will try now with the staff to come in here, give them that little bit of confidence, give them that little bit of belief, and try and move it forward game by game. It's extra special though, Billy, to beat Derby, obviously your closest rivals, I mean, they could be in the mix towards the end of the season, they've got a good strong squad, so is it, you know, partic uh, give you a real particular post today, if you like? As I said to you earlier on, I'm, I'm more pleased because, you know, there's no doubt that one, one club is described as a shambles and other clubs described as making good progress. So for us to be competing with that club, I've got to say, is very, very good. I'm delighted with that situation that we are competing. You know, we've only been in here, was it, I don't know, uh, a number of weeks, but we're certainly making steady progress and we'll continue to try and do that. What do you mean by um, one club being a shambles, Billy? Well, that's what they say. They say that this who, that, who, who that, that, they say that this club is is what it is. You know, we've been reading that. But as I said before, I'm delighted that they were competing with that, and uh, you know, I'm pleased. I'm pleased that that uh, you know the situation is is where it is. We're making progress. We're delighted to be where we are. Who's going to be shambles then, Billy? I thoroughly enjoyed the game. I thoroughly enjoyed the game. I thought I thought it was a great three points, and um, as I say, it's a great win for our fans. I want you second on the table and being at home and uh, going great guns. I mean, nobody could uh, describe you as shambolic, could they? Mm, I think it's been written in the past that, that there's, this club's not in a healthy place. Put it that way. Sorry, Paul. Is it important to keep a clean sheet and then that run of goals? Well, it is. You know, it is, it is Paul. As I said before, um, just going back to Red's question there, you know, this carry on Kuwait stuff, Red, you want me to get specific. We've read this time and time again about carry on Kuwait and all, the, all this other nonsense. So we're delighted. But it is important for the clean sheet, Paul. It is important we keep doing what we're doing. We are together. The club that is together. We'll keep working away. And uh, we know that there'll be ups and downs. That's what happens. Is it helpful for you for the players to sort of foster a feeling of a club under attack? Is that something you want to do in the dressing room? I'm, I'm too busy focusing on football matches, to be honest with you. I'm here to focus on football games. I'll continue to focus on football matches. Prepare a club, and I'm sure that you guys will give us the credit we deserve when that appropriate time comes along with wins, losses and draws and what defeats, whatever else it is. But my focus is on football games, nothing else. Billy, we're always happy to give you credit for football, football matches. Always happy to give you credit yeah. Other issues, we reserve right. Yeah, no comment. To, to, to pass judgment. No comment. But we're a bit more than that. I'd just like to play some record. And I'd like to say to you, no comment. To give you no comment. No comment. Can we have a discussion off record? No, none at all. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Do you have any views on um, the two Millwall claims for penalty and one for Forest? Sorry, sir, where are you from? What's your name? Sorry. South London Press. Uh -huh. My name's Toby Porter. Pleased to meet you. How are you? I'm all right. Good. Uh, I'm obviously going to give you a stock answer, which is genuinely, I need to see it again. You know. Hey, ben Hall from the Sun. Um, just a quick question. As a photograph of you being surrounded by police officers and a photographer, was there an incident that happened? I asked the photographer where he was from. Yeah. Uh, I, I only asked him a question. Can you tell me where you're from? Because two minutes be or five minutes before that, I asked one of my staff where he was from. Yeah. And it was just a, excuse me, sir, can you tell me where you're from? Mm. That was it. So there's no answer? Nah, none at all, absolutely not.
also reported that Davis had suffered a breakdown in his relationship with the club's owner and chairman, Fawaz al Hasawi. So who's next? Well, the club are in talks, we understand, with Neil Warnock. He's a very experienced manager. He was actually in charge at Notts County 20 years ago. There he is as a younger man, but more recently had some success with Leeds. It was really quite interesting, I think, if you read into it a little bit. This came from the uh, chairman and owner, Al Hasawi, a short time ago. I've picked out a couple of elements. Uh, he said, I'm aware many people expect me to announce a new manager imminently. However, I must stress the need for patience as I make the important decision of who takes the reins at this crucial stage of the season. All fair enough there. Well, he goes on to say, supporters can rest assured the local and national press will have regular access to whoever is appointed as our new manager, as with immediate effect, any bans imposed on members of the media are lifted. Things need change. And uh, we have nine games to go. We have to concentrate on it, and we have uh, to do it. That's it. Uh, regarding uh, the new manager, there is nobody in mind at the moment. Uh, Gary Brazil, uh, manager for the, the reserve team and the academy, he's in charge at the moment. It might be temporarily. It might, he might continue till the end of the season. Former European Cup winning captain John McGovern was today at the training ground too. He's been given an ambassadorial role and Al Hazawi says all media bans have been lifted with immediate effect. Davis returned for his second spell in charge last February. Forrest have been in the top six virtually all season, but on Saturday suffered an embarrassing defeat on Derby Day. The one thing Nottingham Forest need more than anything is stability at the moment because the number of managers they've had allows no continuity with players, with training methods, with systems and things like that because it's, it's not been one and two years, it's been months at times where they've changed managers. And I think that's got to stop, they've got to stabilise things, get a manager and say, right, give me a game plan, two, three years, whatever, and we'll, we'll give him that opportunity because the expectation levels at the city ground are very, very high. To do that with my experience, I have to really do the job the way I see it being done. And I, I just I couldn't see me totally being able to do that. I don't think it can be run on, on the line that it's being run on at the moment and have long-term success. It has to have a bit more experience and a bit more knowledge in the English game in, inside, the, inside the club. We contact many managers, but in the end we want to choose the right one. With all respect for all the managers, I think all of them are great managers and all of them have a good CV. I have uh, John McGovern with me and uh, John McGovern, he is the legend for Nottingham and he worked with us as an ambassador and I always, he advised me what to do. The hint is of some sort of team interference. I mean, managers <laughs> don't like that, do they, from a chairman? No, no, they certainly don't. Maybe that's why he's got me on board. Uh, because when it comes to team matters, you know, whoever comes in as a manager, you know, he won't have any interference from the chairman at all. You know, he, he'll pick the team, he'll pick the players. Uh, obviously, it'll have to be if he's signing or wants to sign players, um, which you better be sharp about, actually, because even the temporary transfer window closes on Thursday. So it's just a case of, you know, if we bring someone in, is he the right man? Does he have quality? Does he have experience? All of these things will be solved very shortly. John McGovern, new club ambassador, thank you very much. It was Forrest's lowest league attendance this season. For the fans who did go, one big question on their lips. Who is going to replace Billy Davis? I suppose Zola would be a good choice, but uh, Malky Mackay, I think, definitely. Steve Clark. I'd like to see Stuart Pearson. I would love to see Nigel and Stuart. It is tough, obviously. We're, we're waiting to see what's going to happen with the managerial situation. Um, the lads have, have given their best efforts tonight and uh, we really are trying to, to sort things out. It's not easy for this lot at the moment because they, you can see they're suffering with a lack of confidence and, uh, uh, and the game can be cruel at those times. Former Nottingham Forest captain Stuart Pearce has ruled himself out of returning to the club as manager. Pierce, who trained the England under-21s, confirmed he'd held talks with the owners of the club after Billy Davis was sacked on Monday. He also said although there was an emotional pull to the city ground for personal reasons, he wouldn't be taking those talks any further. Temporary manager Gary Brazil was the man taking training today as the search for a permanent manager goes on. Chairman Fawaz Al Hazawi says big names remain in the frame. He's hoping to make an appointment soon, but says it may have to wait. Some uh, manager, they are still on the garden leaf from other club, 
we would like them to be with us and some of them they would like to take the job uh, from scratch they said or on the beginning of the season they don't want to to risk it on the last eight games I don't want to rush because I there is many managers here in the country they are willing to, to take the job now okay uh, and but I am waiting for the right one Earlier this week, Neil Warnock also said he'd turn the job down, fearing interference in team matters from the chairman, something Al Hazari denies. Somebody, if you tell him you don't, you don't want, we don't want you or we don't want to, to hire you for the job, he might say things in the news, and this is normal. But what's, what's make me really upset, because this is not Fawaz. This is not Fawaz. Fawaz, you don't talk to managers and to tell them how to play, or otherwise I will be the manager, why should I hire manager? For 12 years, he wore the Forest shirt and during that time became a club legend. But could Stuart Pearce be about to return to the city ground as its new manager? Today, it's being reported the club have reopened talks with the former Reds and England defender after making him their primary target. After everything we've been through with Billy Davis, I think he's the sort of man that we need to come and inspire the players, just get the fans back on side, really. It would be a positive for the club. Maybe to instill a little bit of passion for the Red shirt, and maybe to also instill a little bit of discipline and um, give an 100% for the club. Yeah, well, obviously, I don't think it's confirmed yet, but obviously um, Stuart Pearce is a good friend of mine and we're a great colleague, you know, we've had great years together. And he's a man I admire and a footballer I admire. So it'd be great to see him back in Nottingham. I think the Nottingham public would take to him. I think they love him, so it would be good. And, it, and also the club, sometimes when you get hiccup, it, it, it could gain a great momentum just from Stuart coming. So. If he, he, I'm not sure if he's coming this season or next season, I'm not sure. It'd be great to have him now because then obviously you've got momentum to carry into hopefully into the playoffs. But whenever he comes, it'd be lovely to see him here. Today it was confirmed he'll be returning as the new manager. I'm very proud. Uh, it's a great opportunity for me. Uh, looking forward to coming in in the summer, uh, galvanising the squad, working with the chairman and hopefully driving this club forward and, and putting it in the Premier League if possible. Pierce will take over from Gary Brazil, who was in charge of the last two games following the sacking of former boss Billy Davis. Forest fans are delighted by today's announcement. Well, he's a legend at the club. I'm so happy he's come back. I'm, I'm so happy he's going to lead us to the Premiership and hopefully get us back to where we should be. Very good. Uh, I'm glad he's coming back. Um, it's good for the team. He, he knows about football. I'm, I'm ecstatic. Um, I just hope that he brings back the glory days. I mean, I wasn't old enough to witness them, so I need to see them again. The chairman, Fawaz al Hasawi dismissed claims that he interfered too much in the past and said he would back Pierce 100% and leave all the decisions to him. You said that you'll be supporting the manager. Um, in terms of uh, financially, does that mean he'll be able to uh, get any player that he likes? Of course, of course. I will give him full support of that. And, uh, all the player he's going to ask for, of course, we will be behind him and we will be supporting him. From my point of view, um, A, that's good to hear. We, I've not asked him or, or said what budget are we working to. I don't think that's important at this moment in time. I have to look at our playing staff and see what we've got for next season. And on top of that as well, it's important that we make sure that if we've got talent in the academy, those players are, are enabled to sort of flourish and push their way through to the first team. Now the, the honour of coming back into this club is massive for me. It's not lost on me, make no mistake about that. But I'm acutely aware of what I've done here as a player is totally irrelevant. It's what I do from day one when I come through that door on the 1st of July to drive the club forward and make the man to my left very proud of me and, and make sure he's uh, delivered the right man for this football club. He'll become Forrest's fifth permanent manager in just two years when he takes over in July and is clear what to expect on his arrival. I'm a football manager, I select the team, I give the, the go-ahead of players that leave and the players that come into the football club and, and the, uh, the dressing room situation, that, that is non-negotiable for any manager, it certainly is for me, but on and above that I want as much involvement as possible from the chairman and he's, he's aware of that and uh, as I say I look forward to working with him. He's your fifth manager, do you hope that he's your last manager now? I hope so, and I would like him to stay as long as I can to keep him in this club. Everybody's happy that he's with us, and uh, all the fans are happy now to have him back with us. The fans will support him, and, you know, and I think everything will go well for him. There's going to be a lot of expectation on his shoulders with him being a, you know, a legend here as well, so I'm hoping it all goes right for him. Yeah, he's a legend at the club, isn't he? So, yeah, it's nice to have him back.
welcome to the city grounds. Not words we could have said on the Football League show until a fortnight ago and the departure of a man has been the preceding 13 months had rather run Nottingham Forest exactly as he wanted to. Long-serving staff sacked, his cousin appointed to a senior role and a virtual media blackout. Why did you give Billy Davis so much power, Fawaz? Well, in the beginning, I would like to welcome you here. Uh, I give all the manager, I give all the manager support. Any manager come to this club, I support him. And this is uh, the strategy for the family. Do you, do you regret giving him that amount of power? No, no, I don't like to talk about what happened before. Uh, but, but here's the problem, Fawaz. There'll be a lot of people watching know this traditional football club. Yeah. And you bought it for those very reasons. But they look at what's happened over the last 13 months and they think, what has gone on there? I understand. You know, this Nottingham Forest is a big club and uh, uh, who has won many uh, competition, of course. But, you know, I'm, I'm, my aim is to win. And every club has the right to, to make changing uh, especially at this moment, to help the club so it can succeed and to go to the Premier League. What has it been like as a Forest fan to observe Billy Davis off the field antics? Well, it was pretty hard to watch, really. I mean, the way he was with the media, not talking to the media, not talking to his fans, not explaining some of the results earlier in the season. It, it, was, it was actually quite difficult as a Forest fan to, to have to put up with, really. We need feedback from the manager, you know, and we wasn't really getting that. I've worked with Billy twice now and for, a, for a lot of years and um, he always had the players you know, on his side and I think a lot of the, the things that went off, out, went off, off the pitch um, were probably to, to keep the uh, pressure off us and to put the focus more on himself and let us get on with our jobs. Was there no way at all that you could find the right manager that was willing to start now to try and lead the charge this season? We were talking with many managers but it didn't work. And I said, no, I don't want to find, I want, in the end, I want to find the right manager from Nottingham Forest. And I would like to have somebody who have link from Nottingham Forest because he knows Nottingham and he cares about Nottingham. I can understand Pierce because he's obviously a fan's favourite. Everyone loves him. I mean, he can, he can do no, no wrong here. We're getting people back in the club who are Forest through and through, which is what we need. Has this been a tougher challenge than you expected it to be, Fawaz? Yes, to be honest, yes. <laughs> of course here last year in the 5-0 win for Derby did Bryson here's Russell taking the corner whips it in near post got in Keogh's claiming it but I think it may have been an own goal I'm pretty sure that went in off a forest head whipped in at the near post and Derby are in front 16 minutes to go and Forest are 1-0 down at Pride Park but they have this free kick it is 35 yards out and it is wide left and it's going to be taken by Osborne with his left foot crowd of bodies inside the penalty area Osborne takes towards the penalty spot helped on by Tesher now might break for a shot yes! turns six yards out and puts it home underneath the body of Lee Grant ball breaks for Tesher Tesher left hand side for Osborne bit of space for Ben Osborne towards the edge of the penalty area the youngster goes on and smashes it home what a strike from Ben Osborne a minute into stoppage time
John as, as the club's ambassador alongside you there. Yep. Why, did, why did you freeze? Dougie was available and uh, although it was a kind of all of a sudden situation where you know we've decided to part company with a manager uh, we're glad we got a yes from Dougie because he's got experience he knows the league uh, he knows the players even so it was an ideal situation where we've got someone that's available you know without thinking about well you know we'd like him but he's with another club you know so it was a it seemed a, an immediate appointment and it was exactly that he was available and we're glad he's joined I think you know any professional manager in the game, you know, would would uh, would be delighted to work at this football club. So there's many many reasons. You know, the fantastic squad, great fan base, great stadium, great history, great support mechanism around me. So it's a fantastic opportunity. What would you say as you as you come in are your main priorities? What are your immediate concerns? We've got to win games of football. It's as simple as that. You know, we can talk about a lot of different things, but we've got to win games of football. And we've got to make sure that is our, our key goals and everything else that goes with it, you know. But games, winning games of football, what we've got to do, we've got to put, you know, confidence back into the squad and make sure everybody's in the right, uh, heading in the right direction. It's clearly maybe a, a tougher job than it might otherwise be, given the, the off-the-field restrictions with the, the transfer embargo. But is that something you've kind of... A little bit of experience with not so much an embargo, but working exactly, with the side exactly. You, you you take the words out of my mouth. I feel that you know, certainly my previous two clubs, you know, there was restrictions there in terms of signing players, so that it, it doesn't come no, uh, nothing changes there. Uh, it just becomes a word using embargo. You know, we we, we have got a fantastic squad, great bunch of lads to to work with this morning. We showed real good commitment on the training ground. You know, and if the truth be known, I don't need to add anybody, so it's something that's it's not at the top of my list to, to talk about or to do. The Nottingham Forest owner tonight says he didn't do it deliberately, but the multi-millionaire chairman has caused an internet storm. Farwas Al-Hazawi uploaded a picture to his Instagram account posing with a dead ram. He's planned to wind us up even more, I think. On Twitter, you can see that obviously everyone's ashamed. I think a few Forest fans are ashamed of what he's done as well, but I think the Derby fans are very angry. For a chairman to do something like that is pretty uh, pretty poor judgement, I think. But Mr Al Hazawi, who is out of the country at the moment, spoke to me on the phone this morning and said, I swear I did not post the photograph on purpose. He added, I like fishing and I like hunting and it had nothing to do with Derby County and said, I did not wish to insult anybody. Forest fans today said it was a fuss over nothing. It's blown out of all proportion, but to be honest, anything that winds up Derby fans is a bit of a laugh. I think it's a bit of a reaction though. He hasn't broken the law, has he? So it's up to him really. That he joined the club on loan a little over a week ago, but goalkeeper Ben Hamer has already gone back to Leicester City. There was no sign of Hamer at training this morning. The 27-year-old was a good addition for Forrest, but the club are under a transfer embargo because of financial fair play issues. And today, Forrest manager Dougie Friedman said he's hopeful they can get Hamer back, but for the moment, he has returned to Leicester. Ben Hamer, unfortunately, you know, there's been some technical issues at the football club, you know, with both clubs. You know, Leicester have been fantastic in terms of trying to help us out, but we're in an embargo and we've got to abide by some rules and the two clubs are trying to just sort that out right now. You know, I would love to get on the grass with Ben and, and, and work with him and coach him, but as I say, some issues right now have got to be resolved over the embargo situation. It was in the middle of last season the money spent reaching for promotion caught up with Forrest, but the roots go back another year to this. It was 2014's attempt to reach the Premier League, the spending, that broke the rules, and this failure to make it left Forrest exposed to the league's embargo. Only free agents allowed. It is sometimes frustrating when you see your competitors spend a lot of money and gaining that advantage, you know, it is, but I am a bit of a believer. I don't believe in financial fair play. I think they should be allowed, people should be allowed to spend their money how they want to spend it. So it is frustrating when I see my competitors spend a lot of money and having quick fixes right now. All it is a bigger challenge to me. So this is almost it for Forrest. The rules say they are allowed 24 players. They have two slots left to fill. There is ways to do it. It's probably not the quick fix way we're going to do it. But in a strange way, my job will probably be, I will probably be left alone a little bit longer than the people that are spending a lot of money. Because the people that are spending a lot of money, they need to get results. And they need to get results very quickly. Despite the restrictions, experienced players have come in. And the manager 
Well, he likes a challenge. I enjoy, you know, you know, beating people to Jamie Ward signing. I enjoy Matt Mills, company football club, where he can pretty much choose where he wanted to go. Uh, siege mentality, not quite yet, but a togetherness in the squad. Uh, and, a, and a, you know, putting a brave face on things at certain times is certainly what we need. Will it be enough? Well, top six is the target. They'd love to start with another day on the south coast, like this one. I am very proud to to be a, a manager of the of this club because I remember I told I told him that I remember the the great moment uh, when I saw when I was young the the, the Nottingham Forest win the Champions League and uh, I remember the players Viv Anderson, Trevor Francis and I was a fan of uh, of Peter Shilton and uh, for that uh, for me uh, I'm very proud to to be a uh, Head coach of the, of this team, about ambition, to be in spite of the glory past, but this is the past. Now the most important is the present and the future. I know mm, the championship is very tough, very difficult. Now a big club like Newcastle, like Aston Villa. My ambition is to to work hard and try to to win uh, a lot of matches and to reach uh, the top. Uh, this is the top level of the team. How quickly did the move here come about? How long did it take for you to arrange the transfer here? Two weeks, two, two weeks, three weeks. Yeah, so last, uh, the last meeting uh, two weeks ago. There's a lot of talk, obviously, at the moment as well about the potential takeover. Have you agreed to be the manager with Fawaz Al Hassawi, the, the current owner? Or with Evangelos Maranakis, who is rumored to be the future uh, investor slash owner. Il y a beaucoup de discussions concernant le rachat du club. Yeah. Est-ce que vous Yes, yes. Uh, I have a contract with Nottingham, and the chairman, Mr. Fawaz, uh, is my uh, chairman. Donc for me, it's very, it's very clear. And may that change in the future? Have you been given? Any suggestions about that? Any assurances about that? Est-ce que cela risque de changer dans le futur? I don't know. It's not my problem. For me, the, the problem is to prepare the, the team during the pre-season to win a lot of matches. After, during the, the problem of the, uh, of the direction of the club, not about the, not about the squad.
So for us, first of all, we hear the Americans would still like to do a deal with you. Is the deal dead with the Americans? Yes, it is. The deal is, is finished between us. Why? Well, I, c I cannot say why, because uh, there is a confidentiality between us. I cannot say anything about the deal, but the deal is over between, between us. It's done. They would still talk to you? Will you not get...? We didn't talk. Now for uh, maybe more than... There is a, a link was between us, between my lawyer and their lawyer. Uh, but I think almost uh, maybe a week or ten days, something like this, I'm not sure. You have tried to sell the club twice in a year. This is a unique situation. Do you still want to sell the club? Well, uh, I, I, I was, as you said, uh, a year ago, there is other buyer who were interested in the club, but it didn't happen, not because of us, because of uh, maybe the football league and, you know, the missing parts or something like this. But it didn't happen. Suddenly, other buyer show, and then it didn't happen to, but I cannot say about why it's not. But regarding other issue, at the moment, I'm not... I'm not going to sell the club right now. I would like to focus on the club and I would like to build the structure for this club and I would like to put the right people in the club. I know you would tell me or people will think that I am, sorry to say this, lying or just saying things is not going to happen. We have heard this before. Yeah, okay, I agree. But uh, uh, I will let action will talk better than words, you know. I can say many things, but at the moment we are putting this in a, in a right way to build the structure. I spoke to Frank Clark, I spoke to John McGovern, I spoke to many people who love the club and they know me very well, okay? And uh, we are trying hard to put the structure for the club again because before, if you, why, you, you're going to ask me why didn't this be, why didn't do this before? You know why? Because I was committed with the buyers that I cannot do anything, and I cannot say anything, and I cannot pick manager or pick player or do anything unless I have to go to the buyer. So now there is no buyer. Now it's Fawaz in his own. But the club is now a shell. We've and been then, at the club four and a half years. You've yeah. sacked seven managers. There's chief executives that have come I and gone. Seven, okay. There's two dramatic sale, two, two okay. sales that have fallen through. Okay, will you do let's it this talk, time? Let's, let's talk about the manager. You told me you sacked seven managers. No. Will you sort out well, the situation at the club? Of, of course I will. Within a week, ten days, things will be clear more. But to bring them all together in one day, it will be difficult. But it, it might be bit by bit, one by one, until we build again the structure in the club. But it's not just fans that are unhappy. The reputation of the club is at an all-time low. Nottingham Forest's name is at an all-time low, and other people in football don't want to deal with you. What can you do about that? Look, Natalie, I bought Nottingham Forest. They were bottom of the league in 2012, before I... Okay, and now I am still in a uh, championship. I didn't take Nottingham for us to the League One. But, you're, but okay, you we're in this terrible situation, you could do. Okay, let me explain to you. At the moment, Nottingham Forest is still in the championship. Okay, I bought them in the championship and they are in the championship right now. I didn't bought them, they were top of the Premier League. They were in the championship. I will, I, I am, I will be always loyal to the club. I will be always loyal to Nottingham Forest. I am a big fan of Nottingham Forest from a long time ago. And I, w I wanted the, the, to put Nottingham Forest in the right place. And I always mention this. But unfortunately, it didn't happen. I agree with you that there is many things is not right in the club. And I promise that I'm going to bring them back. And I know that people wouldn't believe that. And I will, not, I will not say any word. Unless they will see in their eyes the difference and the change will come. And this is, will be coming within a month or two months or three months, bit by bit, unless we build the structure again in the club. I know and I don't blame the fan for what they did against the last game. They have the right to do so. I remember very well, maybe two years ago or three years ago, they were 
they were also supporting me and singing my name in the stadium. And now they are against me. They have the right. Football is like this, up and down one day. It's not just that. It's the transfer embargoes. It's the managerial chaos. It's the winding up orders. It's the unpaid bills. And, you know, some managers saying about interference. What is next, Fawaz, okay. from you? Okay, what's interference? Now, look, it's easy to say words, but please prove it. Well, you okay. are saying you are saying okay. I am interfering. Forget the interference. If I am interfering, I will what bring about? those player, the one, the one I don't want to mention their name, the one, the one man, the manager bring them. I will never ever let 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 uh, those player come to my club. Okay. But the manager, if I if I am interfering, I will pick the player. Why should the manager pick the player? Forget the interference. What about the managerial chaos, the transfer embargoes, the attendance is falling, they have, yes. and wages being paid late. Okay. That has happened. That's a fact. Uh, what is next? What are you going you to do? You want me to explain for you why the embargo, or you want just to tell me what is next? Okay, sh sh what shall I say? Shall I what, what is next, Fawaz? So I don't, you don't want explanation for the embargo? I want you to tell the fans. No, I want you to. I, you need. You need the fan need to know the explanation for the embargo. I think they're in a position now where they just want to because know going the manager, forward what will you do. The manager he was in charge during the time I was giving him full support, okay, and he picks the wrong player. Sorry to say this, with the high wages, and he put us in the embargo, not me, okay. I had the warning later on, from the football league, and I tried my best to sell all these players. But I couldn't because the manager, he picked wrong player. I don't want to mention name, but you know, that there is a way, players we brought for 25,000, 30,000 and 27,000. And unfortunately, the player, they are average player. They should be in 5,000 and 6,000 and 3,000, the player that the manager brought. But forget about this. Now the embargo is gone. Okay. And we are, we are, we know, and we are aware that will not happen again regarding the wine decision that came from court and everywhere. Unfortunately, we used to have somebody in the club who's doing it wrong, and he, did, he passed the wrong information, and now he's not in the club anymore. Okay, now we are going to bring the right people, we are going to bring the right chief executive, we are going to bring uh, the right head of finance, and all these people, when they are there, I'm sure we are going to be safe. And the, all these things, it will not happen in the future. You would tell me, okay, if I was, you always mention this, and in the future you will have the same. Every work, there is, you, you find difficulties in it. It's yeah. okay to blame the managers and, and the, the staff who have worked for you. You are the owner, the chairman, the leader at the top. Yeah. You have to take responsibility for, for everything that happens at yeah. the club. Yeah. Will you do that going forward, and how will you fulfil your obligations? What do you mean, sorry? Can you tell me? How will you mate, mate your responsibilities now going forward at the club? You can't blame the people that work underneath you. I this never, is your club. I you never, own it. I never, bring, I, I never blame the employee. I always support them in the club. Okay? Never, ever. From the time I came till now, all of them, I have good relationship with them. And I never, I never blame them for any circumstances. But... When there is something wrong, I, we talk about it, okay? But uh, as I told you, we are going to try our best. We are, I cannot tell you, now I can tell the people and tell fan that, fans of, that, that I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. But before I cannot tell them I'm going to do this, I'm going to, I, I cannot because my hand is tight. Now I can tell them and I promise them that I will do the right thing for Nottingham Forest. And I don't want them to say, oh, you're always talking like this, and then nothing happened. Okay, it will happen, and you will see action soon. It's only Tuesday, Wednesday, we was invited um, by one of the supporters' clubs to come down. Um, having seen lots of different clubs, Coventry, Blackburn Rovers, Leeds United, my club Aston Villa and inverted commas rogue ownership. I do a lot of radio shows about it and supported a lot of those clubs and those fans in, in that aim. Um, it's interesting, one or two Forest fans have, have, have tweeted me today So, well what are you doing here, what are you sticking your nose in? Well, I don't care about the club, I was here for two years and had two very good years. 
Um, my whole aim is, is simple. If, if I can be involved in some way to be able to get these people answers uh, from ownership, something that hasn't happened at Coventry, certainly hasn't happened at Blackburn Rovers, by walking through the door, looking somebody face to face, um, is then these people can get an answer. Uh, all these people want to do is come and support a club where there's a two-way communication process, that they're competitive in the league, and they feel is progressing and moving forward. And uh, have you met? Because you, you were talking last night on Twitter about meeting up with representative with officials. Yeah, I was. Here. I, was uh, I was called last night, and the aim is going to be Monday, Tuesday. Hopefully, I think that the owner is coming in on Monday or Tuesday from Kuwait um, to sit down and have a coffee, and basically to pass on these people's thoughts and views. Uh, a say? lot. A lot of people have said to me, "You're wasting your time." I've spoken to a lot of people that are currently at the club and have been around the club, a lot of journalists, well-respected journalists, and they've said, don't bother, not for the turning. But I can't help but think of a situation with Mike Ashley at Newcastle, where he did the same repeatedly over a number of years, got it wrong, didn't get the right people involved, and then at 11.59 and 59 seconds, grasped the nettle, uh, gave the football side of it to a football professional like Rafa Benitez, put his money where his mouth is and lo and behold Newcastle is starting to flourish can the, the current owner do that the only way you're going to be able to find out is by talking to him so I'm not here today to say Fawaz out Fawaz in uh, I'm here today as a former player of the club with a certain degree of profile to be able to actually have a meeting and go through the doors of the club to be able to try and get these people's answers, which again, I'll repeat, is not happening at Coventry, is not happening at places like Leeds United and Blackburn Rovers. So there's a 1% a, a chance, but a 1% chance is better than a no, no percent chance. And would you be involved? Would you be involved in any way going forward if asked? If we was asked to just come in and meet and greet in a lounge, then absolutely no. Um, there's been a number of years and I've spoken to former Forest greats, uh, that have exceptional coaching track records, that have been involved in clubs right across Europe. Uh, several top quality coaches have, have got in touch. Not interested in being a coach, not interested in being a manager. But I do know one thing, is that there's a huge void between the man at the top, the playing staff and the supporters. And there are job positions that need to be filled with the right people. So if there's any way by getting on a plane, a train, a car, to be able to facilitate that, then yeah, I, do, I absolutely do believe that. I've been in professional football 25 years, and uh, I know there's a lot of perceptions and a lot of uh, a, a lot of mythology, um, but I don't back myself unless I'm absolutely sure there's something I can do here, and that's been the case for a number of years now. You have to. I think you have to give. You live and die by the quality of decisions. There's no doubt about that. But um, a club of this stature, uh, the history, tradition associated with London Forest. So um, you took everything into consideration. But it's um, you know it's a pleasure to be and a privilege to be here as well. Obviously, the club's gone through a lot of managers over recent years. How much did that weigh on your mind before coming? No, I understand that. And again, you have to set everything into consideration. But I think it's important that you, you have faith in your own ability. Um, you look at the job that you think it has to be done um, in terms of the squad in the summer and, and the ensuing windows, in terms of staffing, in terms of... We have, to, we have to get the club back to where it needs to be. And how do we go about that in the short, medium and longer term? So have faith in your ability and, and go forward with the job. I was going to ask about short term and perhaps more medium term targets. Where do you see this club... Say at the end of your contract, well, the obvious, the obvious answer in the short term is we need to to stay in the division. That's the obvious one. We are where we are, as you said that earlier. So we have to set the ship, get the performances in, get the points we require on the board. Then we need a very solid pre-season to to try and fine tune the squad, to try and add the quality that we need in certain key areas. And, and the club has every club in the division will tell you they have to push for the playoffs and promotion. The Premier League is the promised land and that's what we have to get to. And, and certainly look around the stadium outside there, a club of this stature has to be in the Premier League. So we're not, I'm not alone in saying that, obviously, but there has to be a, a very clear and realistic ambition. Would you see a, a big turnover in players in the summer? I've been here two days, as I say. It's a, it's a, it's a sizeable squad. 
There's a lot of players in the squad and, and that can cause problems in the, by itself. But um, we'll look at the squad. Every player is a blank canvas. Every player has a chance to impress. You know, how hard they train every day, their intensity, their quality that they show. If they work hard, they'll be given a chance, plain and simple. They need to know that. It's, it's right to do that. So um, we've got seven or eight weeks to look at the squad and let's see how we go from there. Do you think you can keep them up? Absolutely. Absolutely. What about the um, uncertainty there is around the ownership of the club and the investment, that kind of thing? How... How aware are you of all of that? Well, hopefully, I've received you know, some, some um, good assurances. Again, all part of the consideration that goes into making a decision of this nature. So um, I'm, I'm confident that we get the support that we need to take the club forward. Um, it won't be reckless, that's for sure. We have to get value from every pound that we, that we spend. That's really important to see the support, to see value for money being spent. But um, no, I'm confident that we get the backing that we need. Ward is in behind here, and Ward sends it towards goal. And a penalty is given because Ward has been bundled over by Bill Kotsky. Will it be lucky 13 for Britta Sombolonga? Yes, it will, as he chips it into the top corner. Brave, brave penalty by a Sombolonga. Form gives it to Cohen. Is the captain going to have a go? Yes, he is. Chris, in. Chris Cohen scores! 2-0 Forrest! It's the captain! It's the longest-serving player who hits one from about 25 yards! Forward to a sombre longer, who's into the box again. Tight angle! Drives it into the roof of the net! Through a crowd of bodies! Well, Matt, the takeover of Nottingham Forest has gone through in the last couple of hours. The new owners have formed an English company called NF Football Investments Limited and have purchased the full 100% of the club from Faraz Al Hassari, who bought Forest in the summer of 2012. Well, Evangelis Marinakis, who is a Greek businessman and the owner of Olympiakos, said in a statement that the objective is to bring back the glory days at the city ground. He added that he wants to rekindle Forrest's past success and that he's committed to the club for the long term. Uh, well, in the last few moments, I've spoken to the Supporters Trust who've told me they're impressed with the immediate signs of structure from the new owners. They've appointed Nicholas Randall as its new chairman. Uh, meanwhile, they've backed the manager, Mark Warburton, saying they will provide him and his team with the support and time to rebuild and create the conditions for success. Uh, now, Forrest, of course, survived relegation on the final day of the season on goal difference, and I'm sure the fans will be hoping for much happier times next season. Yes, indeed. James, thank you. Forrest have a new owner. Greek shipping magnate Evangelos Marinakis has taken a majority stake in Forrest. The replacement for Fawaz Al Hazawi is promising stability and investment, but he's a colourful character. His fortune comes from shipping. In the harbour of Piraeus, he grew the family business beyond all recognition. And he's well known in football as the owner and president of Olympiakos. Seven years in charge, seven Greek championships. But also repeated accusations of match fixing, not all of which have gone away. So let's take our chance now to hear from the man himself. The BBC's Richard Conway got an exclusive interview. Nottingham Forest is a special club. Uh, one of the most historical teams, as you know, in England. Uh, that's uh, where uh, football is born. So it's a whole tradition itself. Of course, uh, when I was younger and uh, I was following uh, English football, when I was 14, 15 years old, uh, Nottingham Forest was doing exceptionally well along the lines with Liverpool at the time and uh, of course uh, there are great memories and uh, there is a solid uh, fan base not only in the UK but outside UK after all these achievements both nationally and internationally uh, out of the UK and uh, I think that uh, it does take you long to decide 
even if you have a choice which team to go for, when uh, you see, as I said, all this tradition and all these achievements, and of course the potential that this club has uh, to grow and uh, achieve again uh, victories that uh, the whole region deserves. So this is a financial decision, but also a, a sporting one as well. It seems that you've been a fan of the club for some time. Yes, uh, you know, I have been a businessman for quite some time successfully, and uh, it's not that uh, money that matters. I mean, it's tradition is uh, what you like at the end of the day and what you can afford to do. And uh, uh, the choice of Nottingham uh, was based on the criteria, uh, what I remember from the past, and also the potential that this club has. And the potential is that uh, with the right people in place, uh, with a solid team that uh, will work hard over the years, uh, with uh, 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 analyzed uh, program, uh, with uh, everybody in the right place, I think that we can make it work. I mean, we are used to to difficult uh, uh, to deal with difficult uh, situations. But we are winners, and uh, I think that uh, uh, I have a very good feeling uh, that uh, Nottingham uh, will do well in the years to come, and we are prepared to work hard and achieve it. I'm not going to promise you things, or I'm not, uh, uh, and I wanted to mm. make this clear, I'm not a rich guy that I came from abroad to spend my money and uh, uh, to gain uh, glory. Uh, by acquiring uh, a team in the UK. I had glories, uh, you know, from my times in Libya cause. We have won everything, we have broken every record, uh, both uh, within our country and in uh, Europe, in the Champions League and in the European uh, competitions, you know, for our level. Uh, what uh, I want to do is not to promise a lot of things, to work hard, talk as less as possible and work hard to achieve things. I want to come on to the, the level of ambition and your, your vision for the club in a little while, but um, one of the things I want to talk to, it hasn't been much fun to be a Nottingham Forest fan in recent years under Mr. Hassawi. It's been a very difficult time. The, the club seems to have lurched from crisis to crisis. Are you promising here, and I understand that this is a 100% deal, Mr. Hassawi has now been bought out completely. Are you promising now to bring back stability to Nottingham Forest? What I'm promising is that we will work hard. Uh, when you work hard and you are well organized, you have stability. Stability comes. And uh, what I can tell you is I'm not going to promise uh, promotions, uh, uh, championships, etc., etc., etc. What I can tell you is that we like to work hard. We know what we are doing. We have been winners in all our life uh, as far as football is concerned, as far as business is concerned, as far as when I was involved also with the municipality in Paris, we have won. And uh, it's something that uh, we're used to it. But uh, it doesn't come for free. You have to work hard, you need to have faith, and uh, we need to take advantage of our connections in football. Uh, we know a lot of players, managers, clubs, uh, officials uh, in uh, various uh, parts of the world in the international football that all these agents can help us to put all our connections together and uh, try to do our very best for Nottingham. You would like to be in the Premier League, though, I'm sure. Yeah, for sure. I is, mean, there, is there a target? Is there a, a number of years? I know you said you're not promising anything, but is, uh, is the aim, do you have a, a five-year, three-year plan, a five-year plan to get to the Premier League? We have a long-term plan. And uh, within this long-term plan, of course, uh, we want to bring Nottingham where it belongs. And, of course, Nottingham belongs in the Premier League and uh, uh, Nottingham belongs to the elite of the Premier League. A two-time European Cup winning club 
no less. Could European glory in the in the chance of return? I mean, the fans are, the fans that have been there, as you know, you grew up with them. And we're, we're, we're used to European nights and, and, and challenging at the upper end of the first division, as it as it was. Is that what they can can hope for once more? Uh, I think that we should uh, take it step by step. Uh, first of all, uh, let's not forget that a lot of things in football have changed. Many things have changed since 30 years ago, 35 years ago, and of course it has become much more difficult to achieve uh, these victories. But of course miracles happen, as we have seen it in the past and uh, uh, we, we continue to see it today. But uh, let's take it step by step. Let's first of all organize the club. Let's organize the club properly. Let uh, our fans uh, see that uh, we are approaching it in a serious way. We are working hard on it and then the results will come. First of all, uh, let's, uh, uh, let's see where, where Nottingham is right now. What uh, I can tell you is that we'll try our very best to do better next year. How better? We'll see it on the way. As I said, I never give promises. I deliver. I think that it's better to deliver than uh, give promises. And uh, work hard. So, let's take it step by step. And I think that it will be a matter of time when we we'll all be happy, and especially our fans. While we're talking about this, then Mark Warburton and Frank McParland, they both... Uh, are confident that they, they will stay in the jobs they are your men to take the club yes. forward yeah of course uh, Mark has done a very good job in the last games and uh, I think that uh, all the, the fans were there to support this effort for uh, uh, Nottingham to stay in the division of course uh, 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 this took uh, until the very last minute of the last match and everybody was excited and happy at the end. Of, uh, so Mark has our full support and uh, what uh, we told him in the past is that we guarantee for him that uh, he will be with us for a number of years. We gave him a contract in order to persuade him to take this difficult job at the time and I think that he delivered uh, in what we wanted to do is to save the club uh, and stay in the division and so far uh, he delivered uh, the first goal so now we will support him uh, together with his team to go to the second step and to have as I said a well organized club that will bring better results for next season It's a difficult league, the championship is he, is he going to have some money to spend to try and get Forrest out of that out of that championship? Yes, he will have some uh, money to spend, but uh, of course, as he has said it already, and of course I can confirm that uh, to you as well, is that we have uh, various uh, regulations uh, that we need to follow. Of, yes, of course, yeah. on how much we can spend, of, and also what has happened in the club in the past, and has been penalized and of course we have to follow these very strict rules on how we spend and how much we can spend but uh, I think that whatever we will be able to do legally and uh, within the regulations we will do it to help Mark uh, do uh, what we want him to achieve victories and a much better position in the league What I want to ask you though is about questions about your own background and there's been a lot said about this, a lot written about this, rumours, counter rumours, allegations. Can we clear this up and get to the bottom of this? You have stood accused over the years of, of match fixing, of being involved in criminal organisations, at one stage being involved in the bombing mm. of a referee's bakery I understand mm. at one stage as well. Very serious claims. I understand some of them have been dismissed legally, judicially, mm. but can you clear up for us now what is the position legally, judicially, with you in, in Greece? Whatever you have said uh, on these allegations, all of them have been dismissed. I have not even gone to any trials because all of them have been dismissed in the past. And uh, what I can tell you is one thing, that I have nothing to do with all this. 
and all these allegations came out uh, out of unknown letters, out of uh, some newspapers uh, reports or websites reports, but all of it came from our opponents because they were jealous of our success. So instead of them work hard, spend money, organize their academies, organize their teams, and be competitive, they tried uh, the other way, just to destroy what uh, we were trying to do. Of course, you down. of course. So, of course, all these years, the, uh, a lot has been said, but nothing uh, came out in reality. So, all of it has been dismissed, uh, and uh, we have been clear from all of this. Now. There is a uh, uh, last case that is remaining that uh, there are about 80 persons involved. I can tell you again that I have nothing to do with it. I'm not worried about it because I know very well what I have done and how I have achieved victories and I'm very confident. Of course, I cannot stop our opponents talking or bad-mouthing. This is something that uh, they have done it all these years and they have been successful, uh, but they have been successful uh, in the ground where uh, you need to show in reality who is the best and who is the winner. We have been the winners, we have won seven uh, championships in a row, we have brought Olympiacos in the best ever position in uh, the UEFA ranking with very big victories over huge teams, we came up to 18th position, now we are on the 24th position, we are within the best 25 clubs in Europe, and you know, the results and our achievements speak themselves. So once again, I'm very confident, I have nothing to be afraid of and to worry about, because I have done nothing wrong. Not to labour the point on this, but there is so that one matter hmm. that is outstanding. Yeah. Can I just stand? You, you talked about there. <laughs> there are those who will perhaps look at that and think Nottingham Forest has had enough instability with with a matter pending. Perhaps you should wait to, before you conclude this deal. Hmm. W what would you say to that? There is not any uh, matter in reality that is pending. As I said, I mean we have. Uh, already been cleared uh, by the Football League, by the authorities. They ask us numerous questions, and uh, at the end of the day, uh, all this has taken place in the last uh, two months, and we are all clear. We have passed all the tests, not only from the local authorities in the UK, but from UEFA, from CAS, from independent organizations. So we have nothing to be concerned, not afraid. To have nothing to be concerned with. As I said, we are very confident. We know what we are doing and uh, what we want is to work hard and achieve victories. That's all. The rest is for people to discuss, rumors, all this. We had enough over these years and uh, this will not stop. It might continue but this has nothing to do with us and this has nothing to do with what we want to do and achieve. So the EFL have given you a, a clean course, bill of health? Of course, they are happy to work with us, we are happy to work with them, and everything is crystal clear. What we need is a solid support from our fan base. And of course we are going to do things for the fans that uh, hasn't happened in the past. For example, what we want to do, and our chairman uh, will very soon will announce on this, is that we want them to participate in our advisory board in the decision making, representatives of the funds, representatives of the local universities in Nottingham, and uh, the youth council. This is something that has never taken place before, and we want to be the first that will organize it, and I think that from our funds and from uh, the students of Nottingham and from the Youth Council, we will hear uh, some useful uh, suggestions that we will try to implement in our program. 
Uh, furthermore, uh, as you said, the supporters and the fans of Nottingham have been tired all these years. Uh, they didn't have such a good times, but they remained loyal. For us, that's very important. So for this reason, what um, I have instructed our guys to do immediately is a reduction on the pricing of, of the season tickets and thereafter on the tickets for the next season, just to show them that we value very much their support. We want them together with us in a joint effort to bring the club in a better position next year and for the years to come to achieve things again. But we have to be all together on this. And that's very important. And of course, we're going to reciprocate on this. What will be your role in terms of Olympiakos? I think many people will say, how will you divide your time between a very successful club in Greece and, and Nottingham Forest, a club that needs arguably a lot of attention? Uh, Olympiakos, for me, is a passion. Is one of my biggest loves. And uh, I grew up... Uh, uh, and I'm a, since I was very young, I'm a, a big uh, supporter of football and Olympiacos. And of course, when I came to England, because I came to England when I was very young, around 15 years old, uh, and uh, I went to high school and then to university, of course, I followed very close the English football. And, uh, you know, for me, football is a way of life and... Uh, I very much enjoy it. Uh, on the other hand, of course, I've got a big business empire uh, in shipping that uh, uh, needs also a lot of work. So for me to work very hard or to work 20 hours a day is something that uh, uh, won't change my life. I have used to it and uh, I have many activities uh, in Greece, the national lot of traveling because I'm involved, as you know, in shipping business, and shipping is uh, something that uh, is a inter very international business all around the world. So you need to travel. We have friends and uh, business associates all around the world. So this needs a lot of work and a lot of traveling. So I'm used to it. And, uh, but I'm used to uh, put professional teams in place, both in my business, in Olympiacos, in Nottingham. Not have already uh, uh, the team is ready in positions on the commercial officer, the uh, financial officer, the chief executive officer, the team manager, the uh, coach, and everybody else around it, the chairman, and the team is ready, full of appetite to work hard and do things. This is a, a challenge I can see for you. This is a, a team that you perhaps see, have seen as underperforming. What is the, you talked at the top of our interview about the potential of this team. What is that potential? The potential is huge. The potential of this team is that uh, when it will be very well organized, when we will achieve victories again, when it will have a better position in the championship, when it will have a better, again, position in championship and we can look seriously in the Premier League, then we'll be there to stay. And when you are there to stay, then you can talk again about even bigger victories in the Premiership. But the whole environment, if you walk in the stadium, if you, you go around Nottingham, you can feel it that if you are there, You'll be there to stay, not only to stay, you'll be there to win things. And um, everybody is confident that this can be achieved. And uh, I think that our players can feel it, the manager will feel it, and everybody around will feel it. It's a magic feeling that uh, when you have this feeling, you cannot go wrong. And you will see it yourself in the years to come. What do you think Brian Clough would be saying if he was here right now? What would you think... Uh his advice would be. Brian Clough uh, was a person that uh, uh, had his own ideas and uh, ideas that no one else had uh, thought before 
and he did it his way. Uh, and he was very successful. Uh, and it's very difficult to find other managers or other people that they will do uh, the same uh, job that uh, Brian Clough did. He was uh, unique, and I think that if you try to do it how he did it, you will not be successful. Because as I said, he was unique and uh, he did it his own way. Uh, what we need to do is, uh, first of all, to see how he did it and uh, try to understand how he was doing things and then, in our way, to implement the good things and how he was able to achieve it and with the right combination for us to do things. But Brian Clough, as I said, it was one and unique. So, uh, it's good to, as I said, not to, to copy and improve. Mr. Marnox, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.